The encouraging thing out of everything so far is it's definitely proved there's a massive need for Dakar. Uh, it's, there's, a, there's definitely proved there's a massive need for what we do. There's a definite need for, um, in every scenario that you talk about, um, we are the ones that are, are actually um, doing that stuff that get into the most needy. Uh, and you could say that you could spin it, no, spin's the wrong word. You could actually describe it that um, uh, working with, uh, what we do is working for stabilization. What we do is, is actually definitely peace building. What we do is actually giving people grassroots mm -hmm. so they have opportunities, so that they don't want to run away from their farm, they don't want to run away from their, from their new compound. Maybe you should just describe what, what is your main projects in Afghanistan, because not all of uh, okay. the people know here. Yep. Um, so our main donor is obviously of Danida, followed by the Norwegians, followed by um, uh, ECHO. Uh, with the humanitarian wash uh, intervention supported by the uh, EU program. And, uh, and then is water the, and sanitation and Water, so forth. sanitation and hygiene, it's a package, yes. yes. So it's a hygiene, a hygiene inter uh, intervention, followed by a water intervention, followed by a hygiene intervention. And in between that, we give them a, a hygiene package. Um, we have 21 different programs going at the moment. Um, so we've, we've uh, quite a diverse funding pool uh, and connected to our very strong wash activities is um, natural resource management, women empowerment, uh, skills um, training, uh, and we're a citizens charter partner. And the citizens charter partner is what came from the NSP program. Um, and at the moment, and maybe we should discuss that a little bit, the citizens charter program is kind of on hold, and we're trying to support the Afghan government on their um, REACH program. Um, actually, it's called a different name now. Um, and that's kind of a, a step up program to try to get the Afghans back on their feet after the coronavirus. Yeah, it has never been easy to work in Afghanistan. Uh, could you describe some of uh, the main challenges you have in, at the moment? Okay, um, to throw that uh, and change that a little bit, um, the scenario has got very, very different and very, very uh, a lot more challenging. Yes, I agree. Um, again, yeah, sorry. That's, usually, there's there's Shawali or one of my one of my <laughs> Afghan uh, colleagues next to me translating for me. And actually, they translate into English, not, uh, not uh, in English. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. um, where was I? Um, yeah, to change that a little bit, uh, definitely the, the, the atmosphere, the, the working environment, uh, the access, um, the kind of outreach with the Taliban has got a, a lot more difficult and a lot more uh, harder for us. Um, credit to Dakar, we are now working in more provinces and more districts than we ever have for a very, very long time. We have better access now than we, ever, we have ever had for a very long time. And actually, I, I have to be very, very careful to, to not to jinx it, but actually over the past two or three years, we've had less direct security instances as well against Dakar than, we, than we've had in the past. Um, we've changed our access strategy, we, we've changed our, our kind of um, outreach uh, to the community, but keeping that cultural sensitivity uh, keeping that brand name of Dakar, making sure our interventions are, are reaching the most needy, is working. Uh, and it proves that, actually, yes. Um, we're working with uh, 943 national staff. Those 943 national staff are only supported by four internationals. And, yeah, we're working in every single province bar three. Um, and the provinces that we're not working in is because there's not a need there. You know, we, we are reaching in the most insecure areas to the most needy. And everything we've said so far, under any scenario, you know, actually, you know, that is what we need to concentrate on. Mm. Um, there was a lot of um, we's being mentioned this morning. You know, we failed, we done this. Actually, I, I think the opposite. If you take uh, Denmark out of the we umbrella, I actually think you, you're doing an amazing job. Your, your approach to grassroots development, reaching the most needy, to sow the seeds, to give them an opportunity at foundation level, is the, most, the best strategy that you can do. And it does tick the box for stabilization. It does tick the box for, for um, development. It ticks the box for, for um, uh, replication. We're, we're after replication. We, as Dakar, are not gonna solve the problem. We're not gonna reduce the GDP gap. But we're, we're not gonna reduce you know, massive problems with, with IDPs and insecurity. But the one girl that we teach, hopefully she goes back and tells her sisters, you know, her and her sisters get married, she teaches their daughters. You know, that's what we're looking for. We're looking at sowing the seeds to make sure that we can, we can build, this, build this thing greater and greater. The ripple in the pool. And Dakar has done that very, very well for the past 36 years. Um, and going through the scenarios that we're going through now with increased insecurity, with um, 
with complexities of politics, with the spread the wings of the Taliban, um, we are in the best position to um, carry on that, that, that platform. Talking about that uh, Taliban, uh, Klaus mentioned it also that we have increasing problems with the Taliban demanding taxes of NGOs, among them Dakar. Can you tell us in, how does it work uh, and how do you deal with it? Yep. Um, we have masses experience of, of, of dealing with, uh, dealing with um, uh, armed observation groups uh, and working and, and gaining access. We don't call our, our security security, we call it access. You know, we work around how we can get the local community to support us uh, and we use them uh, as our best springboard to make sure that we can get into areas. Sometimes it can take a week, sometimes it can take a month, two months, uh, sometimes it takes three months and then it's withdrew and we have to start again. So it delays you every time simply? Um, we, we rely on our brand, we rely on cultural sensitivity and we rely on making sure that, that we reach the beneficiaries at need uh, and we use that community to, to um, argue on our behalf. Mm. Um, but what, what happens when you say to them, forget it, we don't want to pay taxes? Or do you have to say it in a polite way? <laughs> but, but the result um, is the same, isn't it? Yeah, there's, 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 two, <clears throat> there's two ways that we're approaching this. Um, I'm part of the uh, HCT, um, the Humanitarian Country Team. I was voted on that um, representing uh, NGOs. So at a very, very high level, we're hoping to get representation in Doha so that we can, we can pass on to them you know, the, 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 um, the parameters that we work under. So we have a job, so we have a joint operation procedure that we're, that we're um, passing on, or we have passed on to the Taliban through the HC, the Humanitarian Coordinator. And we're hoping that that will advocate at a very high level um, they, will, they will take the opportunity, we've asked to, to explain that document to them and that will hopefully filter down to the, to the field. We're not advocating that um, people should go there individually, we, we want a general consensus mm. that all NGO, NGOs work together, that we cannot pay it and the donors not want to pay yeah. it. On but, the flip but, side of that... So, sorry, uh, Taliban, is that such a strong organisation that they, from the top can be told you cannot charge taxes and then they won't do it? Does it work that way? Right, so on the flip side of that is the negotiations that we do in the field, yeah. Mm. Um, and um, the negotiation, we, we, we always try to stand back and make sure we don't have face-to-face -face, uh, conversations with the influential people uh, that are providing security in the districts that we're uh, mm. working in. Um, so again, we still work, try to work through the, the local communities. Um, and yes, yeah, sometimes we get a different uh, approach from the from the guys in the field to the guys that or the, the general stance from the guys in in mm. Doha or in, in Quetta. Um, I would say that there's, there's many many reasons for that. It's not not necessarily uh, um, a, a big gap between the hierarchy and the guys on the ground uh, in Afghanistan. Um, it, it, it it could be just for for simple reasons um, communication. People actually not not understanding or these people not understanding what NGOs are. These people not understanding you know, the, yeah. uh, the good things and, and how the community mm. can, um, uh, can actually benefit from that. One thing is insecurity, then we have the dealings with the, to deal with the Taliban and tax demands. And, and then we also have a government crisis on top of that. Um, they couldn't even agree on who should be the president and mm. <coughs> a lot of ministers are not appointed yet. How does that affect an NGO? Do, are there delays in getting permissions and signatures yep. and so forth? Uh, Yes, but again, not a, not a new problem for Dakar. <coughs> We've been there uh, when uh, governments have changed loads and loads of times. Um, it's it's quite common that uh, if someone gets someone new gets voted in, then everything changes. Um, ministers change, you know, all the directors change, um, and there's always you know that that confusion um, uh, <coughs> at, uh, back at the end of it. It, it's, it was a long, long time. Uh, uh, last time with Ajraf Ghani and, and Abdullah, uh, and it's, it's turned into a long time uh, this time. We always have problems signing MOUs, we always have problems getting um, permission. But has it gotten worse, you think? Um, I would say in some ministries, yes, and in some ministries, uh, no. We are very worried about the, um, the NGO law. Uh, there's, there's things in there that are going to make us very, very uh, accountable, and, and although they still have the powers to freeze um, uh, bank accounts and to, to close.